welcome to our new series at ACMI called All Things Natural. And I'm going to be introducing you to some things that I have made that have been so much fun that have not cost anything. I've just gone on stick walks. What's a stick walk? Well, I live on Spy Pond and right next to me is the bike path. And I love on days when it's sunny and nice to go out and find wonderful pieces of wood. I mean, like this. I haven't even used it yet, but I can't wait to make something with this. And then there are all kinds of things you can find and then take home. And this goes to a little fairy hut that I made. It's a ladder. But what could you do with sticks that you found? And if you made a ladder, and then there are these adorable little stick chairs that you can make and put on your table and put in little places for people to discover in your home. There are more things than you can do with sticks than you can imagine. Like, look right over here. These were sticks from the bike path that would have been laying there and just doing nothing until they'd been pulled together and made into this bird sculpture. Now look at this piece of wood. Is that not beautiful? I had to stain this, yes, to make all the pieces look like they went together, but that's very easy to do, and I'll tell you about that in a bit. And then here's another one with other sticks, with a little bird and flowers, and you wouldn't always have to make a bird there to put on your little sculpture. You could put a little animal or a little trinket, whatever you want, but it's not that amazing with just these elements, little stones, little bit of wood, sticks. This is just a beautiful stick. I'm going to turn it like this so you can see. And once you find sticks with all different angles and stretching and they did something on their own and you just fall in love with them, you bring them inside and you keep a little box and you think, hmm, I don't know what to do with them right now, but later on I will. You'll be devoted to doing this once you start. Now this is something that I have, a little bird. It's a roving wool bird. And I'll show you how to make one of them. And is this not beautiful, this little stick? And this little bird sits right inside a coffee cup that I have on my counter. And it reminds me to go outside and have a stick walk. And that's what I do frequently. So what we're going to do right now is show you how to make one of these little birds and just the beginning of one of these sculptures. I'm not going to do every step in this, but I'll get you going and I hope I get you inspired because it is more fun. You don't have to go to the mall anymore. You just have your bike path or your backyard as your place to shop for sticks. Okay, here we are with the materials that you would need to make a roving wool bird. Now you look at this bird and you might think, how did she do that? I could never do that. Well, trust me, you can, because I just got started with this myself. And the materials that you need are little balls that you can get on Amazon. These are wool balls. This is roving wool. R-O-V-I-N-G, like moving, roving wool. Just get yourself roving wool on Amazon or at Playtime in Arlington. And I'm sure Michaels has these materials as well. And this is what you do to make a little bird, at least that looks like this. I'll show you what you do. You have to have two balls that come from this little bag and I'll get into the right section here. This is the bottom part and then what I did was I cut this down, this top part, to be a little smaller. Then I glued this on top of this with a, just a tiny bit of glue. I'm not going to do that right now but what you have is two little balls. A little bigger one on the bottom and a smaller one on the top. So, you take a little piece of your roving wool, like this, and you just wrap it around this little section of balls, like this. Then, this is another thing you have to get, 
is roving wool needles. They're little tiny needles with barbs on the end. And all you do is start poking and pulling. And that's all I'm going to do for a little bit here. I'm just poking and pulling so that this conforms to that little ball. You don't have to be fussy. That's what's nice about it. You just poke like this for a while. And believe it or not, these little strands, they stick together. Be really careful you don't poke near your finger because it's easily, easily done to poke your finger and then have your little finger start bleeding. I've done that before. But I've learned to keep my fingers away from what I'm doing. See, already I'm covering the top of this. And I'm also pulling this wool at the back so it stays and covers the bottom part of the bowl, the ball. And then I'm wrapping, I've got sort of a mess here. I'll say, okay, I'm just gonna pull this and I'm gonna see which way it goes so that it doesn't show the under part of the ball. And I'm just gonna wrap a little more. I'm gonna wrap and then I'm gonna poke. And I'm not going to make this perfectly right here for you because it takes time. But you'll get the idea to make the shape of the bird. Okay? So watch this. If I go like this, all those little nice fibers will stay. And we've got the beginning shape of a bird. How good is that? So I'm going to keep poking just a little bit. And then... I'm going to stop because, and I'm going to put this aside and I'm going to make little shapes like this so that we're going to have a little wing on each side. So I'm going to pull a little part of the roving wool and then I'm going to bend it. Then I have a little piece of styrofoam here and I'm just going to poke. And all these little fibers will stay together. I'm going to make this little magic wing. Okay. Look at that. They're not falling apart. So I'm going to put this at the side of my little bird. I'm going to put it down in a place where I'm not poking my fingers. And I'm just going to poke. And because there's this nice little wool ball underneath, it's ready to receive these fibers. I don't know who invented this, but it sure is fun. Okay, that's one side of the bird's wing. Can you see that? I'm trying to tip it so the camera can see it too. And then we're going to take the other part of the wing. And I'm just going to poke on this styrofoam. You can buy this little styrofoam piece at Playtime. It was like a circle and I cut it in half. But it is the best surface. You can't do this just like this because it has, the needle has nowhere to go. The needle has to go up and down and up and down to secure these fibers. That's why these are all staying together nicely. All right, so here is the other side of my bird. I put it down. And I just poke. And you're going to poke more times than I. I'm just doing this to get you started. So look. Out of two balls and a little bit of wool, we have a bird. How amazing is that? I'm just going to put a couple more pokes here. And then with my birds, you can see I made a little beak and eyeballs out of clay. Little teeny balls for the eyes and a little teeny beak. You can do that or you can take a shortcut and you can make it with a pen just as easily like this. Two little eyes and a little mark for the pen with the pen for a beak and then you just pull it out and there we go, with a little bird. I like to have a little tufts on top of his head 
So he looks like he has a little character, so I'm going to do that. You can do that too. And just put this on top of his head, poke in a few more little feathers up there. So it looks like a funny little character. Up, <laughs> quite on top of his head, but you get the idea. And you can fiddle with that beak and make it nicer than I did. But this is basically what you're going to have. Cute little bird. And let's imagine that you've got all your sticks together and you just put it right there on a perch. This looks like a little, a little bland until you put him in there. Now it brings this to life. Chirp, chirp. Also, I've got one other idea. If you happen to get feathers for any reason or find them, it's always fun to put feathers on your bird. Makes it look more realistic, more interesting, more fun. So watch. If I did this and I had a little glue gun nearby, which I do, I would just do this. Put a little glue on there. Put a little bit of the feather. I'm going to break this because it's just a wee bit too big. And I'm going to put this feather right on top of the wings that I made. Where did that little piece go? I guess the other piece blew off. Let's get another one. Okay. I'll tell you what. Making these crafts are wonderful for your health because it slows down your breathing and your being in the moment and it keeps you very centered and you'll feel very satisfied afterwards. So here we are with a little bird with feathers. And now I'm going to put him back in and I think he looks just that much more interesting right there. Okay, so that's what you can do with sticks on the bike path. And here's one more thing I'd like you to see. This is so much fun. We are going to make these little chairs, little tiny chairs that you can have in your home as treasures, as giveaways, as gifts. Look at that. You could doctor this up with all kinds of things and make the most interesting little original gift you've ever given anyone. So stay tuned while we do this. Okay. okay, now we're going to make the little stick chairs. This is a higher one and a lower one and one with a big back. It depends on the sticks that you find. I just have some basic stick here to show you how to do this little chair. All you need is a glue gun, glue sticks. You can get at Playtime or Michael's or online. And you go out for your stick walk and you look and you look and you go, oh, maybe that would make a little cute little twisty thing for the back of my chair. Oh, I need some straight sticks too. Well, let me just bring them in and get going. Just experiment and have fun. So let's see what we do. Here was a stick that I started with like this. And you might want to mix the colors. This is light wood and dark wood. I kind of wish I had the light wood, but I just peeled it off this way. I don't think you can peel it later because there's going to be glue on it. So I took the little sticks off one part of it and I used my clippers like this and I clipped one, two, three, four, five, six pieces. So all I do is take my glue gun and I'm really careful not to glue my fingers because it's hot. I stick on one piece and then I pinch it to make sure that they're all level. Here's number one, number two, number three. If one is a little longer than the other, you can clip it later. Here comes number four. Again, there's no hurry. You're doing yourself a favor if you're just in the moment and breathing. Okay, that's what I have to do too. So here comes number five. 
and number six. And that will be the seat of the chair. Now I'm taking my fingers and I'm pinching a little bit and I'm waiting until the heat of the glue just settles down. I don't want to do any trimming right now, but see now watch, I move this and this is not going to move. It's nice. So then I cut two other pieces, one, two, for the underside. I flipped over this little set and I'm going to put this right here. Oop, one of those guys moved out, so I'm going to give him a little glue right there on the underside. It will never show. In fact, you might want to secure it by going across twice. Here's another piece that will fit on the underside like this. There's glue there, so it already wants to stick. Mm. Well, I meant to stick it this way. Okay. So here's my seat. I've made that. Now, I'm going to have this be the back of the chair. So I have a little piece that's sticking out here and a little corner. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue right in there and I'm going to hold it because I want this to be straight like this. I can secure it later, but right now that's going to stay. That's nice. Then I'm going to take another piece of the stick I was working with and I'm going to measure the bottom to where it's going to end on the seat. This I could break with my fingers. I didn't need to use my clippers. You can do it either way. So here's a nice little place. I can stick some glue. I put a nice glob in there, right there. And I hold it because this needs to line up with the back of the chair. I can see that it's a little off, so I straighten it up. So right now, I'm going to take another piece and I'm going to measure it. I'm going to break it. And I want these two pieces to be secure. So I just put a little glue right underneath here and here. And I've got that much of the little chair made. And I like to look at things and see that they have their own character. So some of you may be perfectionists. Some of you want everything just perfect. Others, oh, I like that. That's a little off. So now, this is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take another stick, and I think I'm going to take it off this piece because I need something that's just a wee bit thinner, not too thick for the front legs. So I'll cut a piece, one piece, two, and I'll see if this works. I'm going to put a piece of, or a, clump of glue right there on the inside and I really need that little piece of wood on the inside to put it next to. And then I'm going to do one on the other side. And I don't know whether these pieces are exact for the length on all four legs or not. It doesn't matter right now because I will clip them afterwards. So now I want my little secure stick to go across and I'm going to let this little piece shoot out and just see what it looks like. Might look at, make it look interesting. So I'm going to put a little piece of glue here and right here. Let Put on this securing piece in the front. Hold it. And guess what? I have a chair, except I don't have a piece that's going this way. What happened to this one? Well, I don't have it right now, but I'm going to put one on. I'll put another little piece of glue here and here. And I'm not being fussy about every little piece matching, but look. I have a chair. I really do. And if I want to 
give it a little more character. I can put more things on it, but first I want to put it down and see if it's stable. No, it isn't. So I take it and I hold it up and I say, now, which guy looks a little too long? And I think it's this guy. And I clip it and I think, nope, a little bit more. And then I know that that one is not the right length. So I put it like this and guess what? It's stable. You can just eyeball it. Now, if this looks too plain for you, I mean, it's pretty cute the way it is. You can always add other sticks going in other directions before you get into even more decoration. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue here and here. And I'm going to add this piece like this. A little bit more interesting. I didn't quite hit the glue there, but I can do that. Okay. A little more interesting. Then I've got some feathers. And the feathers are great because if you've got glue strands going all over the place, they are perfect for covering up the little strands of glue that shoot out as you're working. Oop, getting a little cuter. On here, I think I have some, oh good, I have some flowers. I have some status. I don't know about you, but I keep all my leftovers from flowers and I'd let them dry out and often they make wonderful little accents later on. Here we go. I think that's as far as I'm going to go with this, but here's your little chair. Oh my gosh, you can make a whole set of these. Remember, you can put them on bases, you can get a tile and paint it, do all kinds of things. And then what I would do with this, with this would be I would glue the bottom to make sure this stays. If I were to present this, now look, and it's even more charming. Now, was this not fun? I love making these kind of things, and I hope you do too. So, we have a series of programs, All Things Natural, which will include making things with shells, jewelry with natural objects, and then there'll be a surprise at the end. We're not sure what we're going to do, but at least there'll be a, four programs. So stay tuned and have fun crafting with natural materials. Thank you. Bye. CMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help.